Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. Let's greet each other with our hello song. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Yesterday, we started with my favorite artist, Mark Chagall. I like his pictures because the colors are vibrant, which means bright and clear, and he has interesting subjects in his artwork. We brought out animals yesterday. Maybe you'll see a goat or a chicken or a cow or a sheep, or you might see a rooster. And Chagall did that because he liked those animals and they were familiar to him from his village that he lived in in Russia. And he loved his village. At the, on Friday, we're going to talk about how he made a picture of himself with two faces, one looking to, back to his village in Russia and one looking ahead to when he went to live in Paris in France. So people call him a French-Russian artist because he did his art in both places. But today we're going to look at a picture called Sun on the Village, and it's Marc Chagall's picture that he does that has a lot of the things we talk about included in there. And yesterday I didn't sing to you the song about I in the Village, which I kept out here so that you can still see it from yesterday when we sing about it because it says, a woman playing violin completely upside down, a row of colored houses and a church inside the town. Mark Chagall painted to inspire you and me to paint a green-faced man, a goat, or even a small tree. And that is our Chagall song. Let's look at Marc Chagall again. Remember that he lived to be 98 years old, and he was an artist that painted so many paintings. And if you want to learn more about him, you can look online and just put M-A-R-C, Marc Chagall, and you can see his artwork there. And here's the one we're looking at today. It's called Sun on the Village. So the sun is shining down on the village, but something interesting I want you to notice. There is a moon in the middle of the sun shape. Here is the village and it's rows of tiny houses and they are rectangles with a kind of trapezoid top on their roof. We have a farmer with his horse pulling a wagon. We have people hugging here. We have two people down here. We have a villager here. And here's the chicken. And you'll notice that the couple is sitting on the chicken or rooster. And up in the sky, there's a horse floating in the sky and a man upside down floating in the sky. So what we're going to do is called the turn, turn, turn. We're going to turn our paper and draw. We'll turn our paper and draw, turn our paper and draw, and we'll fill it in with watercolors. So let's take a look. Here is one someone made, a child made this one, but they did one that didn't do too much turning around, except here is the earth with trees upside down and a person upside down and the car is upside down. So let's get started. I brought this little frame because sometimes I say, oh, do you mean this or do you mean this? And if your teacher has one of them, they can use it or their golden paintbrush to point things out. I wanted to remind people about that. So I'm going to put all of my things down. I have a a whole container of things I can use for drawing. I'm going to put my table up on my lap and move my things up here and show you what I mean about turn, turn, turn. So first I'm going to do a picture that has the horizon line. So you can make yours wiggly or you can make it straight. Here's my horizon line. And remember the horizon line means where the 
earth meets the sky. So you drew your horizon line. Now I'm going to keep this here so that I can do my rectangle village houses, small. I do a line up, a line up. And where this one is straight, I just move up here and make it a little straight line there. Uh, the village houses are close to each other, so I'm doing the rectangle there, close it up, do my trapezoid up little di diagonal line, trapezoid up little diagonal line. I could make a row of a few of these, and then I'm going to think about how I want to make my church and the steeple. Diagonal line, diagonal line, part way up. I try to make them end at the same place so they have that. I can do my windows. On his art, he hardly ever shows the doorways of these village houses, but you can. You can make your houses how you would like. You can make some kinds of shingles if you want your houses to be fancier. Decide how you want them to look, and then I'm going to do this one curved like a church with curved place here with maybe a bell in there I might want to put, and then up at the top I will make my cross. Now, I'm going to turn my paper. Over here I'm going to make a, a person. Maybe it can just be like Matt Man, how we make his body be shapes, and you can decide if you want yours to be a woman or a man, and I think mine I will have him holding something. Maybe I'll make him have a violin, which kind of looks like the number eight with the strings and the frets up there. And I'll put his hand holding it. I'll put him in a hat. The picture that we're looking at today, you don't really see the characters' faces. They're just there. Okay, so he'll be floating down that way. I think I'll turn my paper again. Over here, I think I'll make a chicken. So I just make its back, go down and make its tail with feathers, come up here, make its beak, two triangles. I'll put the comb on top of its head and the caruncle under its chin. Okay, so we've put in animals. We've put in floating people, a violin, a church, a village. I'm going to turn this way. And on the ground down here, I think I will make my tree. You can decide what kind of tree you like. A lot of times, children your age try to make a tree that looks like a lollipop. And if that's what you like, do that. I'm going to give it a little place to go there. Now, I think I need my sun. And I want the sun to be in the sky to shine on the village because that is what the name of our picture is. And on the one that we were looking at, he had triangles coming off of his. Do you want that? Do it. If you don't, that's okay too. So I'm going to put my pieces around. So this turn, turn, turn picture is kind of fun to do because you aren't expected to draw upside down. That's why when I'm doing this on the tabletop and I think, I hope the children can see, I'm going to begin painting so that you can see what I'm going to do. And remember I talked to you about mixing up your paints so they don't just look like they came from the store. You like to have a mixture so that your painting doesn't look like it just came out of the box. So to do that, you need to have some water that you can put into your lid. And you know I'm lucky enough to have that paintbrush that has the water in it. So I'm going to go around here and I don't want my sky to be too black. So I can put my water color on here and then go back in with a wetter brush and I'll show you what I mean. Because if you do it really super dark like this, it could be a night picture, but if you don't want it to be night, paint your area with water and then put your paints on. And you know I told you also why I like to do this painting on my lap is because the paints don't run if I'm trying to make myself do a watercolor area. Because if I put too much water, the watercolor runs into the grass area. Then I have to think, oh, maybe I could make that into a pond if it goes over too far into my picture and I don't like it. So now watch, I'm going to dip into my water, put some water here, then add some more color to it so that it will be a darker blue, 
but not quite as dark as if it was straight out of the bucket. Now the paints that I bought have a lot of different colors in it that maybe yours doesn't have because the ones that you usually can get usually have just eight colors in it. So you just have to mix it. And to mix this dark blue, you could mix your purple and the blue that's in your bucket together to make that be a color that you want. And I can go back in and put some clouds in by using my water and stretching the color over. Just put my painty um, brush in here and got onto this. I can add this a little bit more to this one and then finish up my sky. And you can think about what colors you think go well together. I made this game too. I should put it in my um, Facebook page that tells about PBS art and have your teachers be able to um, get it. Because if you roll a number one, it says draw a chicken. If you roll a number two, it says draw a person. So it's a little game that you can just do directions that way and make this a, all a new project. Because if you just do it one way, you think, well, that was fun, but I'd like to try it a different way. And that is that little game. And you can do your paintings that way. Let me go on to what my houses might look like. I look in the one that's on from Marc Chagall and all of his kind of have dark yellowish and brown houses because I think he wanted it not to be the most important part of the painting because it was really the sun that was the most important part to him, I think, because it's the brightest and the thing you really notice first. And that's one of the principles of art is the emphasis. You think, oh, what would I want to show up the most? What is the central thing I want people to understand about this? Boys and girls, you can see, I will not be able to finish this today, but I wanted you to know that tomorrow, we're going to be doing another village. It's called Russian Village, and it needs the same materials. If you would bring black paper this time, because the Russian Village is going to be a night picture, and you'll bring black paper, your oil pastels, and I'm using my newspaper pad so that the um, pastels will brush in there really nicely. Now I'm going to make my temple, it's kind of gonna be adobe, so I'm watering this down. I'm gonna keep painting, but I'm going to sing goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Boys and girls, look how I'm going to make this little part in here be a dark place because it's going into the church and closing things up so that when they go into church, they'll be inside the vestibule and see what's going on in there. All right, thank you for joining me today. I think we had a really good time doing this turn, turn, turn picture, and we'll do something similar, I think maybe tomorrow. Thanks for joining me, boys and girls. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.